Hey guys, taking backups is extremely important, but it's a real pain in the teeth to go ahead and do that for a Raspberry Pi. You have to take out the SD card, plug it into a computer, have imaging software, and so on and so forth. If only there was a way to take an image of a live running Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look. So this solution actually comes from Ron R on the Raspberry Pi forums. They provided a utility to take an image of a running Raspberry Pi and store it on an external drive. If you'd like to read more about some of the instructions here, I'll leave the link to that forum post below. The scripts themselves are hosted on the Raspberry Pi forums in an attachment on that thread. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is log into our Raspberry Pi via SSH and then go ahead and download those files using the following command, which I'll have in the video description below. The files themselves are only about 13 kilobits in size, so they don't take very long to download. But what are we actually telling the Raspberry Pi to do here? Well, the first part of this command is wget, which is webget. It's essentially telling the Pi to grab something from the URL that we'll provide to it. The next command here is a parameter specified as hyphen O. And what that does is it allows us to pass on where we would like the file to be downloaded to, in this case, our downloads folder, and what we would like the file to be called. So in this case, I've called it image hyphen utils dot zip, because I know it's a zip file. And I know that that's essentially what the author has called it. How do I know that? Well, because I tried to download it on a browser and it correctly names the device that way. If you don't specify this, what you'll end up getting is some bizarre PHP file that you won't be able to do anything with so you do need to specify this parameter and then the final parameter that's specified here is the destination the url at which we can find the files so you can see there that's the raspberry pi forums download uh, link it specifies a php file with an id of 50332 once the files are downloaded we can go ahead and unzip them to the appropriate folder using the following command once again, let's break down the command that we just used. So the first portion of the command is sudo, and that gives us root privileges. We need that because the destination directory that we're writing to is protected, and only the root administrator has access to it. My user account doesn't, as standard, have permissions to write to that directory. So the next portion of the command here is the unzip command. That's a utility that it comes as standard with Raspbian. It's in most flavors of Debian Linux, I think. And it's a utility that just allows you to unzip files and folders in the .zip um, file format. The next command that we've got here is the destination of the file that we would like to unzip. So for us, that's downloads image utilities.zip. So we've specified where the command can find the zip file it's trying to unzip. The next and final portion of the command here is the hyphen D user local bin. So that hyphen D specifies that we're setting the directory we'd like to unzip to. Again, it's a write protected directory, which is why we need the sudo command. And we're choosing the user local bin folder because that's the folder that an awful lot of user based scripts and applications gets uh, written to. There is a user uh, user forward slash bin folder, but that's more used by applications themselves rather than end user scripts. So this seems like an appropriate directory for us to go ahead and use. Once those files have successfully unzipped to the destination directory, we're going to want to go ahead and run the following command. That's sudo chmod plus x user local bin image, and then there's a wildcard character at the end. That won't return anything if it runs successfully, but let's break down what that command does. Once again, the first portion of the command is sudo, which gives us root privilege to make changes to this directory. Otherwise, we won't have the permissions to do so. The next bit is chmod, which is the change mode command, and it's combined with the plus x. That's a lowercase x, not an uppercase x. That allows us to turn the files and folders into executables. In this case, it turns the mundane file that doesn't have executable privileges into an executable file which allows us to run it as a script and then finally what we're doing at the very end here is just specifying the files and folders that we want to add the executable command to so in this case once again we're specifying that it's files in the user local bin directory and what I've done here at the very end is I've specified that all files matching the image hyphen and then this X is a wildcard character should be changed to an executable so you can see here most of the utilities start with the image and then there's a hyphen and then the name changes here. This wildcard character means that this entire set of 
uh, files will be changed to uh, allow an executable running without me having to specify each file one by one. The only file that will be excluded here is this readme uh, .txt, which is fine because we don't want to change our text file into an executable. If everything has gone correctly so far, we can go ahead and run the following command, which will take a few minutes to run and complete. Through the power of YouTube editing, we can skip straight ahead to when the command has completed and take a closer look at what we just ran. So the first portion of the command is, of course, sudo. We're taking an image of the entire Raspberry Pi, including protected files and directories. If we don't use sudo, then we won't be able to read those files and directories, and we won't get a proper backup. The image backup utility won't let you run unless it's as sudo, so that's required here for this command. Then, of course, we've got image backup. That is the name of the utility that we just downloaded and uh, turned into an executable. It's one of a couple of utilities that was in that zipped folder, but this is the one that we'll be looking at primarily in this video. The rest of them are kind of out of scope. The next portion here is hyphen I, which specifies that it's an initial backup. It's telling the image backup utility to take a full backup of the Raspberry Pi and not an incremental backup. Later, when we schedule this task to run every so often, it'll be an incremental backup, which is a lot easier in terms of like CPU bandwidth and the time it takes to do the backup. Because at that stage, we're only looking for differences between the running Raspberry Pi and the existing backup. This initial backup is a lot heavier on the, the system itself. And then next we've got the destination that we would like to send the image backup to. Those of you who are subscribed to the channel will recognize this network backup location as the one we specified in my previous video on how to mount network backup locations to your Raspberry Pi. You can check that out somewhere over here. The last portion of this destination is, of course, the name that we would like to name the image file. So for me, I've named that as scheduled p 2 backupimage because I have two other backups already in there. But you can name it anything you like, so long as it ends in this .image category here. Otherwise, the file system won't know that it's an image file. And then we've got two commas here, and this is a blank space in between. What you would normally find here is you would specify the size of the image already on the Raspberry Pi, i.e. the amount of space the root system is already taking up. If we leave this blank here, then we don't need to specify any size and the image backup utility will discover that for us and write the appropriate size to the network backup location. And then finally, this last value here is the size in megabytes that we'd like to expand the image by to allow the incremental backups to grow if needed. So I've specified three gigs here because that should be more than enough for my Raspberry Pi to grow. I don't expect that I will be storing a lot of information on it that will require uh, more than three gigs, at least for uh, several years at which stage I can take a look at it again. So that's appropriate for me, but you can specify this to be whatever size you think. Storage is cheap on the NAS, so I'd rather go larger and find that I was taking up too much space than go lower and find that my backups weren't being created successfully. Once the backup task is completed, I can check the destination folder on my TrueNAS system, and I can see that I've got the scheduled p 2 backupimage file resting nicely here on my NAS. I can be confident that it was completed successfully. Now that we've taken our initial backup of the system, we can be confident we could recover our Raspberry Pi in case of failure. But we want to be able to do this on a regular basis. It's no good having a backup that's six months old or older. So how do we set it up to run every day? Let's take a look at how to do that in the cron tab. We're going to go ahead and run sudo cron tab hyphen e. Veteran cron tab users will know that running cron tab hyphen e runs it at a user level permission. But here we need to run the image backup as root. So specifying sudo at the start allows us to do that. So go ahead and hit enter here. And then we get opening up the sudo cron tab. If we scroll down to the very bottom of this cron tab, we can see that I've already got a scheduled task to reboot the system every morning at 4 a.m. That's just something I like to do to keep my systems nice and healthy, but it's probably unnecessary for any of you. So I'm going to add a new line here where I specify that at 10 minutes past 2 in the morning, I'd like to run the image backup script, and I'd like the destination parameter to be the mount network backup scheduled p2backup.image that I've previously specified. 
What this will do is it will ensure that I have a daily incremental backup of my Raspberry Pi. It will update the existing image backup with any changes that have been made since the last backup task was run. So that's it guys, that's how you take an image backup of a running Raspberry Pi and keep it safe in case of disaster. So at this stage I'd ask that if you enjoyed this content and would like to see more content like this, you go ahead and do the YouTube dance which is to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.